In the world of game development, a well-crafted inventory system is crucial for deepening gameplay and enhancing player engagement. Inventory systems allow players to collect, manage, and use items throughout their adventure, adding layers of strategy and personalization to the gaming experience. With the Hero Game Development Kit by Heroic Labs, creating a sophisticated inventory system for your game becomes a straightforward and streamlined process, thanks to its modular economy and inventory metagameplay features. In this video, we'll dive into how to configure and manage an RPG-style inventory system using Hero. We'll cover the essentials of displaying the player's inventory in the UI, tracking item stats for added depth, and implementing consumables that players can use to earn various rewards. Hero simplifies these complex systems, allowing you to focus on creating engaging and immersive gameplay experiences. So let's get started and implement a comprehensive inventory system that will captivate your players and elevate your game to new heights. Let's start by taking a look at our server runtime code. We've covered the main.go file in several of our previous Reconstructing Fun videos, but the key things to mention here are that when we are initializing Hero, we're initializing it with the energy system, the economy system, and the inventory system. The energy system here is used simply for specifying a health energy that we can use to demonstrate the consumption of items later on. The economy system has our player's initial starting currencies as well as their initial items, which I'll show you in a second. And for the inventory system, we're specifying our base inventory JSON file, which contains all of the items that we want within our game's economy. For each of these, we're also specifying that we want to register the RPCs within the server so that they can be accessed on the client. Let's dive into the inventory systems JSON configuration file. If we scroll down, we can see a number of items defined here. For example, a sharp claw item, which has a name of sharp claw, it belongs to a category called materials. It also belongs to an item set called materials. It's stackable, which means that many sharp claws can be added to the same stack within the inventory. And it has a max count of 255 items. It also has this string properties field here. This is a dictionary of string keys and string values that can allow you to specify a number of properties that are specific to your game's items. For example, here I'm using this to define the rarity of this item as common. If we scroll down, we can see that we have a number of items here that make use of the same properties. However, if you look at our iron sword item here, you can see that this has a max count of one. It's also not stackable, which means that when the player receives this item, it won't be stacked on top of each other. And we've defined some numeric properties here, such as its attack power and its attack speed. Scrolling down to our health potion here, you can see that this example is slightly more complex. This is a consumable item. We've defined a category here called consumable, but we've also specified the consumable property as true. This means that this item can be consumed for a reward. You can see that I've defined this reward here in the consume reward property, and it guarantees that the player receives 50 of the health energy that we've defined within our energies configuration. You can also see that I've defined a health value of 50 inside the numeric properties for this item. This doesn't impact the actual reward that the player gets for consuming the item, but it's there as a nice hint to the UI. Scrolling down, we have a mana potion that gives the player 50 mana whenever they consume it. And then if we scroll down further to our mystery chest item, you can see that we have a slightly more complicated consumable item set up here. This is a consumable item. It's stackable. The player can own up to 255 at a time. And whenever the player consumes it, they'll have a random chance at receiving one of three different rewards, either a number of health potions and some currency, or a number of mana potions and some currency, or an iron sword. You can see that the weight of the health potions and mana potion options are higher than the weight of the iron sword option. This means that there's a two in five chance that they'll receive either the health potions and currencies, a two in five chance that they'll receive the mana potions and currencies, or a one in five chance that they'll receive the iron sword. When they open this chest, you can see that the max rolls property is set to one, which means that the rewards will only be rolled for once. If we updated this property, for example, to two, then the player would receive multiple rewards from this chest. Let's take a look at our economy JSON file now. 
You can see here that I'm initializing the user with 10,000 coins, 1,000 gems, and also for demonstration purposes, a number of each of the items here to demonstrate both the stackable quantities and to allow us to consume some items to demonstrate the reward process. Before we take a look at the client, let's quickly dive over to the Nakama console and show you the API Explorer where we can see the individual RPCs that have been registered for the inventory system within Nakama. You have the consume RPC, which allows an item to be consumed for the various rewards as we discussed earlier. We have the grant RPC, which allows you to grant the player items. The list RPC, which lists all of the items defined within our system. We also refer to this as the item codex. This gives you a list of every single item that you've defined within your configuration. Next is the list inventory RPC. This lists every item that the player currently owns, as well as their quantities and any numeric or string properties attached to those items. And finally, we have the update RPC. This allows you to update any of those string or numeric properties on a specific item. For example, you may want to update the rank of a weapon, or perhaps you want to update the attack speed of the sword, for example. This can be used to create a powerful and sophisticated fully fledged item upgrade system. In our client code, you can see that I have an inventory game coordinator. I've covered the hero coordinator pattern in the past reconstructing fun videos, so feel free to watch them to get a more in-depth look of what this class does. But the key thing to point out here is that once everything has been initialized, I'm finding my inventory manager and I'm calling the init async function. Taking a look at the inventory manager class now, you can see that I have a bunch of properties here that refer to various parts of the game's UI. And then inside my init async function, I get references to both the economy system as well as the inventory system using the get system extension method provided by Hero. Then I set up a number of system observers to monitor any changes inside the economy system as well as the inventory system so that we can update the UI accordingly. Then we refresh both the economy system as well as the inventory system. And finally, whenever an item is consumed, we also refresh the economy and the inventory system to make sure that we have the latest information in the UI. Taking a look at our on economy system change function now, you can see that I'm grabbing the coins and gems values from the economy systems wallet and updating the labels in the UI. Inside our on inventory system change function, you can see that I grab the first item from the player's inventory using the items property here, and I update the items details panel to show that item on the right hand side of the UI. Next, I clear any of the existing UI inventory slots so that we have a fresh canvas. And then I loop through each of the items within the player's inventory and initialize a slot prefab for that particular item. Whenever the item is clicked, I'll update the items details panel to show that particular item. Inside of our items details panel here, you can see that we set all of the various information about that particular item, such as its rarity, its category, and its name, as well as its description, which includes any of the numeric properties that are attached to that particular item. We also have a consume item function here. What this does is grabs a reference to the inventory system, and then it constructs a payload that defines which item we want to consume based on its ID. We then pass this information to the inventory systems consume items async function and then show the rewards in a reward panel. We also then trigger the item consumed event so that our inventory manager can be notified and refresh both the inventory system and the economy system to keep the UI updated. When I run the game, you can see that the player has 10,000 coins and 1,000 gems, just as we defined in the economy configuration. You can also see that they have a bunch of different items here with various quantities, again, as defined in the economy JSON file. You can also see that some of these items have different background colors. This is denoted by the rarity string property that we defined within each individual item. For example, this mysterious egg is a legendary item, as seen up in the items panel here. The mysterious chest is a rare item. And we can also see the category that this item belongs to at the top right of this panel here. The mysterious chest is a consumable, while the bolt is a material. Taking a look at our iron sword now, you can see that not only did the description come through, 
but we're also displaying those numeric properties such as the attack and the attack speed. These numeric properties could be used to fuel various different functions within your game, such as how powerful a particular item is. Let's have a look at our health potion now. You can see that the description here says this is a potion that heals 50 health points. We're also pulling that numeric value to display in our UI. You can also see that because this item is a consumable, the use button has appeared within the UI. Clicking this will consume the item, and you can see that I received a reward of 50 health. You'll also notice that within the UI screen, the count went down from 10 to 9, as one of this item has now been consumed. Let's take a look at the more complex example of our mystery chest now. You can see the description here, and if we use this item, you can see that we received 3 health potions and 45 coins. Pressing OK, you'll see that our quantity of health potions has increased to 12, and our coins has increased to 10,045. Let's try it one more time and see what we get. This time we won the Iron Sword. Awesome. Let's finish by taking a look at what this looks like inside of the storage engine for this particular player. If we go into their account and into storage, you can see that we have both an economy as well as an inventory items storage object. Let's open the inventory items object and take a look at it in the tree view. You can see that each of the items has a particular identifier. This is known as its instance ID and allows us to target specific items for updates and consumption. You can see we have a count property of nine, the item ID that this refers to, the owned time, the update time, and any string or numeric properties for that particular item. I hope this video demonstrated how quick and easy it is to set up an RPG based inventory system using Hero's powerful economy and inventory meta gameplay systems. Our Hero Game Development Kit makes implementing complex meta gameplay systems, such as the one you've seen here, extremely quick and easy with our configuration driven and composable meta systems, such as inventory, economy, energies, progression, and more. We empower developers to add engaging gameplay features at breakneck speed cutting development times by as much as 12 months. If you'd like to learn more about how Hero can help power your next game, head on over to heroiclabs.com hero, where you'll find all the information you need to get started. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on our community forums at forum.heroiclabs.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.